What's going on everybody? So today I want to talk about fly fishing um, in high water. So a lot of times high water or off-color water can be a deterrent for fishing. Um, actually, I think if you just follow these few simple tips, um, as long as you can safely wade, um, there's no reason you shouldn't be out fishing um, just because the water isn't ideal conditions. So I'm going to fish. Uh, there's a spot here behind me. Um, that I want to fish and I'm going to talk through some pointers uh, as I'm fishing and hopefully I'll be able to pick up a few fish. So one of the first tips I want to give you is just because the water is um, a little bit higher than normal or moving a little bit faster you don't necessarily need to use heavier flies or more weight to get the fly where you need it to be. Um, just make a few simple adjustments. If you're euro-nymphing, um, what I would recommend is making your tippet a little bit longer um, before you go to heavier flies. Because a lot of times you'll make this mistake, um, you'll cast, and as soon as those flies break the surface current and they get down to the depth where fish are feeding, you'll just automatically stick on bottom. So instead of going to heavier flies first, try just maybe a foot and a half longer tippet than what you would normally use. Another tip I would use is, um, and people don't necessarily always think of this tip, but I actually go heavier tippet when the water is a bit higher. So for this run behind me, if water was normal conditions, I would actually probably fish uh, 7x, maybe 8x, but the water's a touch higher than normal, like I said, so I'm actually gonna go with 6x. And the reason I like to go a little bit heavier tippet than normal is a lot of times that lighter tippet, even if you're using those lighter flies, that heavier current, that light tippet will just ride on top of the water and float. Versus the heavier tippet, um, as long as you're casting effectively, that tippet is going to break that surface current and then the heavy current of the water is actually going to hold that current or hold that tippet down um, a little bit faster than say lighter tippet with those lighter flies. Now when talking about fly selection, as I said earlier, don't always necessarily go, um, if you're urinifying, a heavier fly. Um, what I like to start with, again, is whatever's going to get me to depth most effectively. So that's kind of what I'm starting with as far as weight wise. Now as far as color goes, if squirmy worms, mops, or any kind of junk fly you feel confident with that, by all means use it. I absolutely hate the mop fly. It is my last resort, whether I'm guiding or if I'm fishing for myself. Um, I, <laughs> I'll talk about this in another, in another video, but I absolutely hate the mop fly and everything that it's become and stands for. But all that aside, what I like to use um, as far as fly selection goes is I'm picking a little bit bigger of a fly and I don't mean like a size 8 or 10 golden stone fly or something like that you know whereas I normally fish anywhere 16 to 20 size 22 flies I'm maybe gonna size up to like a 12 or 14 and I just think a bigger fly tends to stand out uh, more in the water to feeding fish but also fly color too makes a big difference 
So just because the water is brown or chocolatey or off color, you don't necessarily need to go with something bright that's going to grab the fish's attention. You need to pick something that's going to contrast the water. A lot of your dark browns, dark greens, uh, black flies, black flies in color tend to work really, really well. And you can test that just by, um, you know, looking at the dirty water and dip your flies in. See what stands out better to you. If it stands out to you, it's going to stand out to the fish for the most part. So when the water's a bit higher and more off color, uh, I'm fishing a little bit bigger size fly, but also something that, that is a bit darker.